as part of the BFI Britain on Film season, we teamed up with the QFT to create a season called Made in My Town. And uh, these were focusing on films specifically that were shot in Belfast. We created a season with a variety of different films. We had Carol Reed's classic, Odd Man Out, uh, which was made in the 1940s. Uh, Mickey Bow and Me, which is Terry Lone's um, version of Old McCafferty's uh, hit stage play, Mojo Mickey Bow, uh, which arguably kicked off a kind of new aesthetic about how Belfast films were regarded. And then right up to the present day with Paul Kennedy's Made in Belfast. The interesting thing about Made in Belfast from the perspective of how the city is represented is it's very much a post-conflict drama. It's asking the question, what kind of city are we after the Good Friday Agreement and after the 2000s? I mean, what did you expect? A hero's welcome? I don't know whether to hug you or give you a smack in the mouth. I know which one I prefer. Said and done, uh, I'd always wanted to make a film. I've been a, I wasn't just an actor. I was a theatre director for years and years, and I've always wanted to direct a movie. And um, I don't think anyone was just going to come along and offer me the chance to do it. So I had to make it happen for myself. So I had this idea for a script, which was very low budget. So I just scrambled out a first draft, got it down in about a week, worked on it, sent it to a few actor friends. They decided. Oh, this looks like something we should maybe get involved with. The script wasn't too bad. Tried to put a very meagre budget together for it. And we did that. And then we just planned it and shot it in a couple of weeks and edited it and made the movie, really. Again, the word luck keeps coming up. I was lucky enough to connect with a producer who had a track record. I had no track record in film. I had done one short. And I encountered a beautiful piece of theatre and I wanted to make it into a film. And I worked on it, I got a bit of development money. But the key for me, the magic was getting in touch with Mark Huffam, who, you know, if we were gonna get some money together, that he was gonna be trustable, trustworthy, because I had, you know, I hadn't proven anything at that stage. And I was crazy enough to say, well, I wanna make this film. And I knew I needed somebody who could uh, guide me on that route. And, you know, Mark was a gift. One of the interesting things for audiences is that we teamed a lot of these features up with selections from the Northern Ireland Screen Digital Archive, which is archive um, really back to the early, early filmmaking of the city. So things like the Lumiere Brothers, um, the Mitchell and Kenyon shots that were done in Belfast, uh, all the way up to John T. Davis, who was the inspiration behind um, Good Vibrations through his film Shell Shot Rock from 1977. We have decided that we're just not going to conform with what everyone has told us to do. We're going to be different. And close to the heart. I mean, we just freaked out when we heard it. We had a record. There it was. I mean, I'll play it for you. I suppose kids today, I mean, we were all learning our trade back then as well. So maybe it's not that different in some ways. There's certainly a, a, a more of a... You're not such a strange animal. I mean, the, I think the, back whenever I started, you, it was really, you know, you, you did stand out a lot. Um, and uh, you had to be much more ingenious about what you did and how you did it. Okay, you do a little bit of an interview on, on film because that's all you could afford to do. And the rest of it was done on audio. So you had no pictures. So you had to be more creative in what to put over those. These are fascinating glimpses into the kind of filmmaking, not particularly well known, uh, that has been made in Belfast through the last century. And so it was very important for us to give the depth to these bigger features that Peter, people know through using Archive. And it really is a tremendous audience experience for them to see that. Well, one thing I kind of find, you know, looking at the kind of evolution of film down the decades, it's just interesting to see how depictions of the city have changed, you know. Um, right back to the maybe 1930s, 1940s, you had the likes of uh, the Ulster Tourist Development Association, the kind of precursor to Tourism NI, and they depicted uh, Northern Ireland and Belfast in a very romantic light, but kind of trying to search for a national identity. Dear Mary, our holiday is almost over, and we are spending our last weekend in Belfast, which is a bustling but friendly city with some fine buildings and wonderful shops. And we've kind of moved away from that now. We're kind of, you know, post Good Friday Agreement, different depictions of Belfast, different types of films being made here. You know, they could be made here, but not about here. So it's it's interesting to see where we've come from and how that's evolved. 
Um, obviously, going to the cinema has been part of Irish culture for a long, long time. And I, I understand in the 60s and 70s, there were 30 odd cinemas all across Belfast. You know, the picture house was the centre. If it wasn't a dance hall, it was the picture house. So I think it's been a key part of people's lives here. Uh, I think that, that in the last number of years, people have been much more excited about things happening here. But we do have a sense of ownership of, of things that are made here, which is great. Uh, the flip side of that is you've got to put it in front of a, a Belfast audience or a Northern Irish audience and you've got to hope they like it because if they don't, um, <laughs> you'll be run out of town.